The Romans are the occupying enemy, so it's going to be something slightly more than awkward when one of the early Christian believers, let alone one of the key leaders, is called to go and meet with the Romans. It's more than awkward because it breaks with Jewish history where Je Jews did not meet with Gentiles in their homes. And yet that is exactly what happens in today's events. So, reading from Acts chapter 10. At Caesarea, which was a town about 30 miles north of Joppa, where we were in the video before this one. In Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day, at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? he asked. The angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now, send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel had spoken to him and gone, Cornelius called two of his servants, a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told the three of them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. He's wasting absolutely no time whatsoever to get on with this. And so let's join Peter now, who is still in Joppa. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. Now, when you read the word trance, the word in the Greek implies being taken into another realm. And the realm he's taken into is one of the heavenly realms in this vision. He saw heaven open and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. The four corners represent the whole of the earth. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. Remember, in the upbringing that Peter has had as a Jew, certain foods are clean and certain foods are unclean, and everything on this sheet was a mixture of those animals. But the voice speaks to him a second time in this trance, in this vision. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. Why three times? We don't know. But it was three times. Maybe it always takes three times for Peter to get a message, if you know what I mean. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of this vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out if Simon, who was also known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs and do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter still hasn't quite worked out what this vision meant, but certainly this vision was needed for Peter to respond to these Gentiles because this was totally outside the box of way that Peter would have been thinking. But God has used this vision to begin to communicate to Peter that in Christ God has declared every human being to be of special worth and dignity. The entire world, that's the four corners, needs the gospel. The clean animals represent the Jews. The unclean animals represent the Gentiles. God often prepares us in these kind of ways, not necessarily a vision in a trance, but you find when things are coming in God, he does prepare us. So often we ignore him. Church reset. All that we're talking about right now, the messages that are coming worldwide from God, will we ignore them or will we run with them? So what happens next? They explain 
as Peter comes down to the men and says, I'm the one you're looking for. Why, why have you come? The men replied, we have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel came to him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. And then Peter invited the men into his house or into the house of Simon the Tanner to be his guests. Because, of course, there's not enough time left to make the journey back up uh, north towards Caesarea. Caesarea is the HQ of the Roman forces of occupation. It is the enemy headquarters. It's named in honour of August Caesar or Caesar Augustus. So amazing that you can see how Peter is so open to the leading of the Holy Spirit to even consider going to such a place. The next day, Peter started out with them and some of the believers from Joppa went along. They've obviously been hearing what Peter's been saying. The following day, he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and he called together his relatives and close friends. So this is getting to be quite a big gathering. Now, normally a Jew would not go into a Gentile house, but he's had this vision. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter managed, made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate or visit with a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone pure, impure or unclean. That has not changed. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius answered, three days ago I was in my house praying. And he repeats the story that we've already heard. Luke is very keen to convey that this is from God. This is not just a, a change that happened. It was a direction of God to, to rip, but he, God wasn't really changing anything. He's just showing them the original intention that Jesus came for all the world. So that's why they're there, because God told Cornelius, Cornelius to send for him. So Peter begins to explain the gospel. Of course, we've only got a uh, summary, really, of what Peter said. We do know that some of it is probably almost a direct quote because there are some verses, uh, particularly verses 36 to 38, that are actually very awkward Greek. because, uh, And it's probably because Luke is recorded or has uh, a record of what Peter actually said. And Peter, of course, wasn't used to speaking Greek. He probably spent very sort of broken Greek. And uh, sometimes some translations are tried to tidy it up. I mean, it's been translated into English, so we can't fully capture it. But in the Greek, the actual Greek at this point is quite broken Greek. I think it's wonderful. It's part of the sign of the genuineness of it. But, you know, it's some people have been upset, historically speaking, because it spoils a, a holy document. This is a holy document. It's from God. But it's not a superficial document. It's not a highly dressed up document. We always see people as they actually are. We see God addressing Peter against his prejudice so that he will go and talk to these people. Way, way beyond awkward. It's not just awkward Greek. It's a whole awkward situation for Peter. It's an awkward situation for the church. But this is the beginning. We've seen the eunuch, the Ethiopian eunuch, the first Gentile um, to be really converted that we see. And now we see Peter with Cornelius. And this would be the big change when the church would begin to take off amongst all of those who are not Jewish. So Peter's preaching the gospel and it says, Why he's speaking these words? The Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. See, God can't be put in a box. They hadn't been baptised in water and here they are being baptised in the, in the Spirit. The believers who had come with Peter, who were Jewish, were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. So Peter had obviously explained to them his vision. He'd explained to them why they were going. But the fact that they're astonished that the Holy Spirit would do that shows they hadn't 
fully got it. But perhaps now when they see God moving on these people, then, then they could see this is true. No one is unclean or impure. They hear, they hear them speaking in tongues, so they know they've been filled with the Holy Spirit. This is sometimes called the Gentile Pentecost because this is the first outpouring on a group of uh, Gentile Christians. And they hear them speaking in tongues and praising God. So Peter says, surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptised with water. How could they? Oh, they can't be baptised with water. They're not, they're not Jewish Christians. Well, they've been baptised in the Holy Spirit. And notice they still do baptise them in water. And there is one just final message, really, in this chapter of that this gospel is for all. Let's just read the last bits. Surely no one can stand in their way of being baptised with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered, that's Peter, that they be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. So Peter actually stays with the Gentiles. He stayed previously with Simon the Tanner. Now he's staying with the Gentiles. This is a radical and complete change. We've got to be open to how the Holy Spirit is leading us in these times. But one thing that is certain is the gospel is for every human being. Keep safe, everybody. God bless you and choose your path wisely. If you're liking these videos and would like us to continue making them, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and tick the bell to get notifications. Thank you so much.